RMS Queen Mary 2. The RMS Queen Mary 2 is the largest ocean liner ever built, the flagship of the Cunard Line, and is the only passenger ship operating as an ocean liner. It was designed for routine crossings of the Atlantic, replacing the aging Queen Elizabeth II. Queen Mary II is not a steamship, like its predecessor, but instead is powered by four diesel engines, making it much faster than other cruise ships, with its top speed of 35 miles per hour. Some of Queen Mary II's facilities include 15 restaurants and bars, five swimming pools, two of which are outdoors, a casino, a ballroom, a theater, and the first ever planetarium at sea. The ship's promenade is protected by a large screen which allows passengers to completely circumnavigate the deck while being protected from the high winds, a 2,030-foot stroll. Seawise Giant Built in 1979 in Japan, the Seawise Giant was the longest ship ever built prior to its decommission in 2009. It was longer than the height of many of the world's tallest buildings, including the Empire State Building in New York and the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur at about 1,500 feet long. The vessel had been bought and sold and repurposed several times during its long lifetime. As a result, it had been known by no less than five different names. Seawise Giant, Happy Giant, Yare Viking, Nok Nevis, and Mont. The Seawise Giant was built by Sumitomo Heavy Industries Limited at their shipyard in Japan. About 10 years later, during an Air Force attack in the Persian Gulf during the Iran-Iraq War, the ship was severely damaged from oil fires, and it sank. Despite the fact that the ship was declared a total loss and was written off, the wreckage was salvaged, towed to Singapore, and repaired. It was put back in action, having been renamed Happy Giant. In 1991, the ship was bought by the Norwegian ship owner Jorgen Yare. He paid $39 million for it and renamed it Yare Viking. From 1991 to 2004, it operated under Norwegian control before it headed back to the Persian Gulf, after being purchased yet again. There, it was renamed Nok Nevis and became a permanently docked storage tanker. Nok Nevis was sold once more and its new owners reflagged the vessel to Sierra Leone. It was renamed Moth and embarked on its final voyage to India in 2009, where it was intentionally beached and scrapped. The 36-ton anchor was saved and sent to the Hong Kong Maritime Museum for exhibition. TI-Class Supertankers The largest oil tankers currently operating are the TI-Class Supertankers built in 2002. TI refers to Tankers International. These vessels are the largest of the oil tanker category called ULCC, ultra-large crude carriers, and they're worth a cool $120 million. In 2002, four of these massive tankers were built by the Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering Company in South Korea. They were originally named the Hellespont Alhambra, Hellespont Fairfax, Hellespont Metropolis, and Hellespont Terra. They were about 1,200 feet long, just shy of the size of the Seawise Giant. In 2004, Overseas Shipholding Group bought two of them, Hellespont Fairfax and Hellespont Terra, and renamed them TI Oceania and TI Africa, respectively. They were both headed to the South Pacific where they were flagged for the two Marshall Islands. Then Euronav, a Belgian ship owner, purchased the other two, Hellespont Alhambra and Hellespont Metropolis, and renamed them TI Asia and TI Europe respectively. They both headed off to Europe and were flagged for Belgium, and these two are still operating today. But in 2010, TI Asia and TI Africa met the same fates as the former Seawise Giant and were both converted into oil storage vessels. Because of their massive size, these tankers can't enter ports to unload. Instead, they have to offload cargo oil either directly to a smaller oil vessel or to offshore platforms where the smaller vessels later collect the oil. The TIs don't fit through the Panama Canal nor the Suez Canal either. Their journeys are typically very long since they're not exactly built for speed, and they're usually at sea for more than two months at a time. 
Maersk Triple E Class. The Maersk container ships are a common sight for anyone who lives near or travels by a port. The Maersk Triple E Class was the world's largest version of a container ship at the time it was built in 2011. Triple E in Triple E Class stands for Economy of Scale, Energy Efficient, and Environmentally Improved. When you see a Maersk container ship and its giant familiar logo, you'll also see piles of containers upon piles of containers. 23 rows of containers can fit across the width of the ship, and they pile up to 10 high, with a capacity of 18,000 containers in total. When sailing across the oceans, the speed of 25.5 knots makes it one of the fastest of this type of vessels in the world. It is powered by an impressive twin diesel engine design, and the engine alone weighs 2,300 tons. CSCL Globe The CSCL Globe, built in 2014, is the largest container ship in the world, taking the place of the Maersk Triple E Class. The CSCL Globe is the first of five identical container ships to be built at the Hyundai Heavy Industries shipyard in Ulsan, South Korea. These are the biggest container ships in the world. The CSCL Globe is 1,200 feet long, 200 feet wide, with a depth of 100 feet. The large container ship is equivalent to the size of four football fields. It has a dead weight of 184,605 tons and a cargo handling capacity of 187,541 tons. That means it can hold 19,120-foot containers for a thousand more than the Maersk Triple E class. The vessel's propulsion system includes the biggest engine ever built, a state-of-the-art two-stroke engine built at HHI's engine building division. It can generate 69,720 kilowatts of power at 84 rotations per minute. The Oasis of the Seas This giant luxury cruise ship is part of the Royal Caribbean Fleet. It is one of the biggest cruise ships in the world at a close 1,200 feet long, 215 feet wide, weighing in at more than 225,000 tons. Cruise goers will find 18 decks and will use the ship's 24 elevators to get around. The ship can accommodate almost 7,000 guests in 2,742 staterooms, and the crew totals 2,100 people. The ship has so much to offer its guests that there is no reason for them to even disembark at a destination. The ship itself is the vacation. It's basically a floating island. The attractions include a foliage-filled central park, two rock climbing walls, six whirlpools, and four swimming pools, including the impressive Aqua Theater Pool, which is 18 feet deep and is one of the largest pools at sea. There's even an ice skating rink, a sports court, several spas and fitness centers, and movie theaters. And if you're bored, you can surf in one of the two Flowrider surf simulators. After all that activity, guests can dine at one of 20 restaurants with 20 chefs and 222 cooks. For after hours, there are 11 clubs and bars, and 7 retail stores are available for anything you may have forgotten to bring on board. Q-Max Ships The Q-Max monsters are tank ships called LNG, which transport liquefied natural gas. Hence the name. The Q-Max ships were built in 2009 by Samsung Heavy Industries in South Korea. There are 14 of the ships built at the same time. Q stands for Qatar and MAX for the maximum size of ship permitted to dock at the LNG terminals in Qatar. The LNG carrier design features four or six tanks located along the central line of the vessel, holding 266,000 cubic meters of LNG. The first trip by a Q-Max tanker was completed the same year it was built, traveling to the port of Bilbao, Spain. Having transited the Suez Canal for the first time, a feat not possible by many of the giants on our list. MV Blue Marlin Imagine a ship so big that it transports other ships. In order to transport a ship that still isn't ocean ready, or perhaps a damaged warship, or even move a gigantic oil rig, 
a massive vessel is required. The MV Blue Marlin is an HLC or heavy load carrier built in the year 2000 by the Dutch company Dockwise. It is designed to transport very large semi-submersible drilling rigs above the ship's deck. The ship loads its cargo by submerging the deck below the water by way of ballasts and then raising the cargo by emptying the ballasts. The ship has an overall length of about 1,300 feet and a dead weight of 56,000 metric tons. It requires a lot of power to transport such heavy things and has a main engine output of 12,640 kilowatts, which translates to 17,160 base horsepower. The ship can accommodate a crew of 60 with its 38 cabins. The crew can also stay fit on board with a fitness room, sauna, and swimming pool. Russian Nuclear Icebreaker a nuclear-powered icebreaker is a ship used in the northern sea routes that are covered with ice. The only country building nuclear-powered icebreakers is Russia. Nuclear-powered icebreakers are much more powerful than their diesel engine counterparts. And even though nuclear propulsion is expensive to build, install, and maintain, they are much more efficient than diesel propulsion ships. Diesel engines have a limited range before they need to refuel and the difficulty of refueling in an Arctic region make the diesel vessels less practical and economical for ice breaking. The nuclear-powered vessels eliminate the need for refueling. During the winter, the ice along the northern sea route can be up to 7 feet thick, and the Arctic Ocean's ice can be up to 8 feet thick. The nuclear-powered icebreakers can force through that thick ice at speeds up to 12 miles per hour and in ice-free waters, the ships can go twice that fast. Planet Solar The polar opposite, pun intended, of the Russian nuclear-powered icebreaker is the MS Turinor Planet Solar, known simply as Planet Solar. It is the largest solar-powered boat in the world. Launched in March 2010, it's a futuristic-looking catamaran-style boat with two hulls. The 100-ton ship needs a massive solar array to capture enough energy to push itself through the ocean. About 5,500 square feet of photovoltaic cells charge almost 9 tons of lithium-ion batteries on board that are stored inside the two holes. Two years after it launched, it became the first solar-powered vehicle ever to circumnavigate the Earth. The aim of the stunt was to focus on public awareness of the importance of renewable energies for environmental protection for the future. We hope you enjoyed this video, and we want to know which is your favorite of these giant vessels. Let us know in the comments!